Hi, my name's Helen and welcome to my Stories from the Art Room. This is part two where we explore the comic and spiritual part played by a naughty demigoddess called Balbu at Eleusis. A place where her trickster joking flashed a signal of hope like a sunbeam suddenly illuminating a graffiti on an ancient ruin. Robert Graves made it clear in his book, The Greek Myths, that what we understand as Greek myths are fixed at a given moment on a continuum of religious evolution. Graves explained how political and social pressures have distorted and revised these stories like a, a mirror fracturing, clouding and reforming in progressive systems of belief. The Eleusinian mysteries have not been exempted from this process of disguise, so much so that people now have difficulty recognising Baobu's original and essential truth. Baobu's joke played a central part at Demeter and Persephone's right at Eleusis. A short account of this main event was described in the introduction, if you'd like to review that. The power of the mysteries at Eleusis lay in the fact they had no dogma. Instead, certain spiritual acts were displayed to inspire religious feeling, visions onto which each generation could project the symbolism it desired. And whatever its nature, the Eleusinian mysteries commanded great respect and happiness. It is said the ecstasy in the worship of Demeter was knowing that the end, the end of life and its God-sent beginning. There are many different figurines of Balbu at Eleusis, where each is thought to have been placed on spikes, driven into the ground in a circle at Demeter's sanctuary, perhaps in imitation of ears of corn. But their exact meaning is lost. The yearly festival at Eleusis, a small town northwest of Athens, lasted for eight days at Demeter's temple and was renowned all over the ancient world. And the observations that were practiced there lasted for more than 2,000 years. It was open to all who had pure hands and intelligible speech. And Athenians wanted their children to be initiated as soon as was allowed. Crowds of people of all nations attended, all women of all classes, slaves, foreigners, prostitutes, citizens' wives, and who all joined in processions to be initiated into the religious rituals and purification rites. It was thought to hold the entire human race together and was enormously popular up to until AD 268 when it was destroyed by Christians. In early agrarian societies, the main crop was always associated with a goddess religion based on cyclical renewal. In Athens, it was corn, in Africa maize, and in Britain, it was barley. The shape of the grain um, echoes the female parts. The primeval myth of Demeter, Persephone and Baobu was traditionally enacted by costumed people from a particular family living in Eleusis with song, dance, garlands and special foods and a particular drink. The Eleusinian rites included a communion ceremony 
the breaking of bread, as Demeter is a corn goddess, and after that a form of baptismal purification, and then the wearing of white, a practice imported from Egypt. Contemporary writers who witnessed the mysteries said it was intoxicating. People emerged from the temple joyful. However, they were asked to keep the revelations secret. So now we have to speculate. In Victorian times, a theory was pieced together about what was experienced at the festival and this was perceived as being rather ribald and slightly ridiculous, although most probably it was accurate. It is this. The initiates were reborn when they perceived redemption and regeneration in the vulva as an ear of corn, which was displayed to the congregation in a blaze of light. And beholding it, the initiates could no longer doubt their beatific lot as children of the goddess. We do know the initiates had to identify themselves by a password and a sign of recognition by giving a summary of what they were required to do during the festival. And Clement of Alexandria made some cryptic records about this password list. One task included reaching into a basket or mystic chest for a variety of cakes, balls of salt, pomegranates and a serpent. In addition, there were items considered symbols of G. Themis, earth goddess as lawgiver, a lamp, a sword and a woman's comb which is a euphemistic expression used by the mystae for a woman's secret parts. Having completed the tasks, the initiates intoned that they had penetrated beyond the veil or chamber. A mask and cloaked baobu is said to have appeared late in the afternoon on the fifth day of the festivals at a bridge between Athens and Eleusis. There, the initiates were accosted with buffoonery, mocking songs, the chanting of ribald obscenities and strange games as a means to stimulate fertility. Although to describe Baobu as a fertility goddess like other Venus figurines is far too reductionist. Afterward, everything was kept absolutely secret. At this bridge, after the mystery had spoken the passwords, the masked Baobu gave them kaikian, a gruel blended with mint. It has been suggested that an hallucinogenic mushroom was used in this drink. Ergotized barley beer has also been suggested because Demeter was a goddess of grain, but ergo is toxic, causing gangrene and convulsions. However, macerating grain infected by claviceps paspali in water would effectively separate the water-soluble psychoactive alkaloids from the fat-soluble toxins. Whatever hallucinogenic was used in the gruel, its consumption assisted the climax of the initiation, which was so transformative it remained imprinted on the memory of the mystery for the rest of their life. I hope you enjoyed this brief account of Baobu's part at Eleusis. The next episode I will be showing how the spirit of Baobu is connected to a complex array of vulva displaying figurines with a vast geographical range from Siberia to Spain. Please subscribe 
if you wish to get a, a notification for that. Until then, bye for now.